Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with the main points in a nutshell. Syria conflict, Red Cross alarmed over Qasir. Turkey assesses damage in Istanbul and Ankara protests. U.S. counts cause of deadly Midwest storms. Iran President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in helicopter scare. China General Defense Maritime role in island disputes. India's economic growth at slowest rate in a decade. And now the news in detail. Syria conflict, the Red Cross alarmed over Qasir. The Red Cross has expressed alarm over the situation in the besieged Syrian town of Qasir and has appealed for immediate access to deliver aid. Thousands of victims are believed to be trapped in the town which lies close to the border with Lebanon. The battle for control between pro-government forces and rebel fighters has made medical supplies, food and water scarce, the Red Cross says. Russia has also reportedly blocked a UN declaration of alarm on Qasir. The Draft Security Council declaration, which was circulated by Britain, voiced grave concern about the situation in Qasir and in particular the impact on civilians of the ongoing fighting. Council statements such as this must be agreed unanimously. However, a diplomat said Russia blocked the draft text because the UN had failed to speak out when Qasir was seized by rebels trapped by civilians. An opposition activist told reporters on Friday that around 30,000 civilians were still in the town. Rebel-held parts of Qasir are effectively blocked by government forces and Hezbollah fighters. The International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC said in a statement it was alarmed by reports of civilians trapped in Qasir and was prepared to enter the town immediately to deliver aid. Civilians and the wounded are at risk of paying an even heavier price as fighting continues, said the head of the ICRC's operations in the region, Robert Mardini. The UN Secretary General's office also appealed to the warring parties to allow residents to flee. Reporter Imogen Fogues in Geneva says the fact that both the UN and ICRC have issued urgent statements at the same time in indication of how desperate they believe the situation has become. Fighting in Qasir intensified last month with militants from Hezbollah, the Iranian bloc Lebanese group joining forces loyal to President Bashar al-Assad. Reinforcements from the rebel Free Syrian Army had reported to have managed to break through from the northeast to support the embattled rebel fighters. Some Lebanese Sunnis have also crossed into Syria to fight alongside the rebels who are drawn largely from Syria's majority Sunni community. On Saturday, influential Muslim cleric Yusuf al Quradawi called on Sunni Muslims from around the Middle East to join the battle against President Assad. He told a rally in Doha that Iran and the Lebanese Shia group Hezbollah, Mr. Assad's main allies, wanted to exterminate Sunnis. Activists from UK-based pro-opposition Syrian Observatory for Human Rights say rebels in Qasir are bracing themselves for another assault. Fifteen Syrian army tanks have massed north of the town, says Rami Abdel Rahman, the observatory's director. Turkey assesses damage in Istanbul and Ankara protests. Turkish police have arrested more than 900 people during two days of protests, the most sustained anti-government outbursts for years. Interior Minister Mohammed Gular said some of those arrested had since been released, others would be put on trial. 
He said 26 policemen and 53 civilians had been hurt once seriously. Violence flared after police cracked down on a protest over the park of Istanbul. The protest sites were largely calm early on Sunday. Reporter James Reynolds in Istanbul says a lot of people are fed up with the government which they believe wants to take away some of their personal freedoms. Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan has offered to talk to the protesters but our correspondent says there is no clear leader of the demonstrators. In the early hours on Sunday there were isolated clashes around the streets of Istanbul. But witnesses said the atmosphere at dawn was calm and largely peaceful, with demonstrators milling about between burnt-out cars and gathering around fires. Correspondents say the steady rainfall has dampened protest, and many of the demonstrators have gone home to get some rest. However, he says this has been a largely afternoon and evening protest, and that clashes may resume later in the day. Thousands of people had packed into Istanbul's Taksim Square on Saturday as the police pulled back. The initial protests had been a local dispute over plans to build a Gezi Park near Taksim Square. But police attempted to move the demonstrators using tear gas, sparking an angry reaction that snowballed into nationwide protests. U.S. counts cause of deadly Midwest storms. Thousands of homes remain without power in the U.S. Midwest after a, a huge storm system swept through, killing at least 12 people. Nine people died in Oklahoma City and its suburbs, and three more in Missouri. Hundreds of people were injured, many of them on roads, as they tried to flee tornadoes. Heavy rain has also left many areas flooded. Two weeks ago, a massive tornado struck the Oklahoma City suburb of Moore, killing 24 people. The National Weather Service Storm Prediction Center warned that the severe weather was moving east on Sunday, threatening an area from Virginia to Maine with damaging winds and heavy downpours. The Oklahoma Corporation Commission said more than 91,000 homes and businesses were still without power on Saturday. Workers are trying to clear down lines. Some 20 centimeters of rain fell on Oklahoma City area, causing flash flooding. A trailer park in Oklahoma City was among the areas evacuated. Governor Mary Fallon insisted we are going to get through this. The storm struck in the rush hour on Friday night, with many people taking to the roads to try to get to safer areas. Terry Black, a teacher assistant in Moore, told Associated Press she had tried to outrun a predicted tornado. It was chaos. People were going southbound in the northbound lanes. Everybody was running for their lives. My car actually lifted off the road and then set back down. Two of those who died, a mother and her baby, were sucked out of their car when the largest tornado and the storm struck near Oklahoma town of El Reno. Iran President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad in helicopter scare. A helicopter carrying Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad and a group of government officials had been forced to make an emergency landing in a mountainous region in North Iran. No one was hurt in the incident on Sunday, the president website said. The pilot reportedly managed to land the helicopter safely in the Alborz mountain range. Mr. Ahmadinejad is coming to the end of his second and final term as a nation's president. He was on his way to inaugurate three road projects including Iran's biggest road tunnel in Mazandaran province when the helicopter came down, reports said. The president and his accompanying delegation are in perfect health and the crash helicopter stayed at the crash site for repairs, the news agency Maher said. It was unclear what caused emergency landing. Mr. Ahmadinejad is believed to have returned to Tehran by road. Eight approved candidates are standing for president elections in June. 
Mr. Ahmadinejad's term in office ends in August as constitution limits bar him from standing for a third time. His ally, Absandiyar Rahim Mashe, has been barred by country's Guardian Council from standing as former President Akbar Hashemi Rafsanjani.